the first question is the person says wanakam wanakam is the tamil word which means hello and i say hello to you too i believe the person is the tamil who's asking the question and he writes wasant here i'm a hindu residing in bahrain i am reading and getting knowledge about islam for some time but slowly day by day can you please tell top 5 aspects of islam which can inspire non muslims apart from the five pillars as i am aware of them basically brother wants to know the top 5 points that inspire non muslim to become muslim get them closer to islam besides the five pillars and let me tell you that the major points that inspire a non muslim towards islam are the five pillars i'll briefly mention some of the points of the five pillars and then come on to the other five important points besides the five pillars according to me the number one point that inspires non muslims towards islam is tawhid it is oneness of allah subhanahu wa taala and the concept of god in allah subhanahu wa taala it is unique unlike other religions the concept that there is only one god and that we worship no one else besides him alone and he is the all powerful he doesn't have any associates he doesn't have any partners this concept of tawhid not merely monotheism tawhid that you worship him alone and no one else it really impresses a non muslim and the definition of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given in brief in surah ikhlas chapter number 112 verse number 1 before we say qul huwa allahu ahad say he is allah one and only allahu samad allah the absolute eternal lam yalad wa lam yulad he begets not no is begotten walam yakullahu kufanat and there is nothing like him this surah ikhlas in short is the touchstone of theology giving the definition of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in brief and it makes it completely different than the other concepts of god whereas if you see in other religions god can be defeated god has got son god has got wife the wife gets abducted the god can be killed so all these are not the true concept of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number 1 is tawhid number 2 it is the second pillar of islam that is salah that when a person of a salah he gets closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is better than any meditation it gets you peace of mind it gets you serenity and it demonstrates the best example of universal brotherhood and when the muslim men when we stand for salah in congregation we stand shoulder to shoulder and feet to feet irrespective whether the person next to you is a king or a pauper whether he is black or white we stand shoulder to shoulder it demonstrates the best example of universal brotherhood five times every day i am just mentioning some of the salient features of all the five pillars which attract a non muslim number 3 it is a zakat that every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level 85 grams of gold should give 2.5% as zakat as obligatory charity to the eight categories the poor the masakin etc and here the people feel the closeness and as allah says in surah hashar chapter 59 verse number 7 zakat prevents the wealth from circulating only amongst the rich it gets a closeness between the rich and the poor so this aspect attracts a non muslim the fourth pillar as fasting it is som and we mentioned all the objectives of fasting all these objectives get a person closer to islam the fifth pillar is hajj a pilgrimage anyone want the means and the health and the wealth to perform hajj should do it once in his lifetime and hajj is the best example of annual universal brotherhood where more than 4 million people from all over the world from different parts of the world from saudi arabia from india from pakistan from bangladesh from uk from usa from singapore from malaysia from indonesia they gather and the men they dressed up in two pieces of white cloth unsewn and they only come and say labbaik allahumma labbaik here we come at the service of the lord so this shows the universal brotherhood it shows the equality of all the human beings all dressed up in two pieces of white unsewn cloth this demonstration of brotherhood impresses a non muslim this was just in brief about some of the sale in future we can give a talk for several hours in reply to this question the important points that attract a non muslim towards islam 
Now coming to the main question, what are the five top important points besides the five pillars which attract a non-Muslim towards Islam? Number one besides the five pillars according to me, it is the Quran. The glorious Quran is the last and final revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. The Quran is the ultimate miracle. It's a miracle of miracles. And anyone who reads the Quran, even the translation, if it's a good translation, it brings tears to his eyes. He realizes the beauty of life. He realizes the purpose of creation. He understands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He understands the deen. Only giving the translation, a good translation of the glorious Quran to a non-Muslim, it will do wonders. It is one of the major factors besides the five pillars, which attracts a non-Muslim towards Islam. It's unlike any other book in the world, unlike any other religious scriptures. Number two, besides the five pillars, it is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And according to Michael H. Hart, Muhammad in his book of 100 most influential people in the world, from Adam, peace be upon him, till today, number one he places being a non-Muslim is Prophet Muhammad. If you read the seerah of the Prophet, as the Quran rightly says in Surah Qalam, chapter number 68, verse number four, that thou art standeth on the highest standard of character. That means the character of the Prophet is so superior, it is the best standard. And Allah repeated the message in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 21, that verily in the messenger of Allah, in Prophet Muhammad you will find the most beautiful pattern of conduct. His conduct his lifestyle, his behavior was an example so much so that even his enemies could not deny calling him Alameen, the trustworthy, the honest person, they respected him. So if you read the seerah of the Prophet, there are high chances that if a non-Muslim reads with an unbiased mind, though there are thousands of books written against the Prophet, but if you read the seerah, you will find that he was the best example, best exemplary human being that Allah has sent on the face of the earth. Number three, top reason besides the five pillars that a non-Muslim accepts Islam and gets attracted is the concept of life after death. That is believing there is life after death. Because when you look around us, there is so much of wrongs happening, there's so much of criminals, so much of injustice being done. And you wonder how is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowing this injustice? Is he not capable of stopping it? Allah gives the reply in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse number 185 that every soul shall have a taste of death and the final recompense will be on the day of judgment. And this life is a mere amusement. If you enter Jannah, you have achieved the objective of this life. Because this life is just mere tools of deception. So here we know that the final recompense is on the day of judgment. Imagine if you have to think of Hitler, the person who we know who has killed the maximum number of human beings in the world, history tells us 6 million. Even if you catch Hitler today, what punishment can you give him? Maybe death, that will compensate for one. What about the remaining 5,999,999 human beings they have killed? The only reply to this is, Allah will give him the final punishment in the day of judgment. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 56 that as to those who reject our signs, we will cast them into the hellfire and as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they shall feel the pain. That means in the next life and today we have come to know that the feeling of pain is based on the pain receptors which are present in the skin. So if your skin is burnt and the pain receptors are destroyed, you cannot feel the pain. And that's what happened in this life. A person has a 100% burn injury and his pain receptors have been destroyed. You cannot feel pain. But on the day of judgment, Allah says, as often as your skin is roasted, we shall give you fresh skin so that you shall feel the pain. That means if Allah wants to incinerate, burn Hitler 6 million times, 10 million times, 12 million times, we can do it. We can't give him such a punishment in this life. So there has to be a life after death for justice in this world. And the fourth point that attracts a person beside the five pillars of Islam is that this life that we are leading is a test for the hereafter. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mulk chapter number 67 verse number 2, Allah has created death and life to test which of you is best in deeds. This life is a test for us for the hereafter. 
Many of the questions that we ask that how are millions of people dying of hunger? There's so much of poverty. Can't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them food? Can't Almighty God? There are so many people dying in diseases. They're dying in earthquakes. What is the reason? The reason is this life is a test for the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala test different people with different things. Some people he tests with wealth, some people with poverty, some people with health, some people with diseases. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155, that do you think Allah will not test you? Before you go to Jannah, Allah has to test you. Allah says, we will test you with hunger or with fear of life or with the property that you have acquired. Allah will test you in different ways. And the fifth reason that attacks a person besides the five pillars, it is the repentance. That the concept of repentance of Tawbah in Islam, that irrespective of however many sins you do, you may do a sin as big as the mountain touching the sky. You may sin the whole day, whole night. But if you truly repent and you ask forgiveness in Islam, Allah will forgive any sin, even if you have done the worst of the sin. So this gives a hope to a human being that now he is bad and now he reads a book, he knows about religion. So can he turn into a new leaf? Very well he can. He may be the worst human being in the world. If he sincerely repents and he asks for forgiveness, he does Tawbah. Inshallah, Allah will forgive him. And the beauty of Islam is, if a person was a non-Muslim, the big sin he does, and after he repents, the bigger the sin he leaves, the bigger reward he gets. So imagine if a person is the biggest sinner and he thinks, okay, now if I accept Islam, all my sins will get converted to the good deeds. Mashallah. So these are the five points that I can think at the top in priority, besides the five pillars of Islam. So hope this answer it's a very brief answer. You can speak for hours on this. But because it's a question answer session, I don't want to spend more time. Because there was a non-Muslim asking a question, I gave a reply in more detail.